What if our divisions don't come out even? For those divisions, we'll need to introduce fractions. The ancient Egyptians used unit fractions, which correspond to the aliquot parts of the divisor. So in case these terms aren't familiar to you, here's a quick review. A unit fraction emerges as follows. Suppose we take a whole object and divide it into equal parts. For example, we can take a cake and divide it into four equal parts. <coughs> four equal parts. A unit fraction corresponds to one of those equal parts. So if we divide a cake into three equal pieces, each of these pieces is a third. Or we could divide the cake into six equal pieces, each of which is going to be a sixth. Or we could divide the cake into four equal parts, each of which is a fourth. Aliquot parts are very closely related. In a cake, we can cut the cake into any number of pieces, but if our quantity consists of a number of objects that can't be broken apart, then the possible divisions correspond to the aliquot parts. So for example, let's say we have 10 objects, say 10 eggs. If we have 10 eggs, we can separate them into two equal parts, each of which is a tooth. Well, okay, this division into two equal parts is common enough so that we actually use the term half. Now, we could try to separate the eggs into three equal parts. But we can't. And similarly, if we try to separate them into four equal parts, we can't do that either. But we can separate them into five equal parts, each of which is a fifth. Or we could take our eggs and separate them into ten equal parts, each of which is a tenth. So let's find the aliquot parts of 12. And so the aliquot parts correspond to the fractions of 12 that give us whole numbers. So we could take half of 12, that's 6. One third of twelve, that's four. We could take one fourth of twelve, which will be three, and then we can also take the fractional parts one sixth and one twelfth. To indicate these unit fractions, the ancient Egyptians did one of two things. In hieroglyphic, they used a row, which represents an open mouth, over the hieroglyphic number. So this represents 10, but if I put a row over it, it represents 1 tenth. On the other hand, the more commonly used hieratic had to have a dot over the leading figure. So we have our hieratic 12. If I want to indicate 1 12th, I'm going to put a dot over this leading figure. And remember, Egyptian is going to be written from right to left. So the leading figure is actually the 10. Now, these hieratic conventions, these are often represented in modern typography by a line over the number. So if I want to write the fraction 1 third, how I'm going to write that is I'm going to write down a 3 with a line over it. So let's go back to those aliquot parts. So we found the aliquot parts of 12 were 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 sixth, and 1 twelfth. And so I can write them this way. 1 half, 2 with a line over it, of 12 is 6. 1 third, 3 with a line over it, is 4. And so on for the fourths, the sixths, and the twelfths. So let's say I want to divide 31 by 12. So we'll form our table of multiples of 12. 1 12 is 12. 2 is 24. 4 would be too much, so I don't have to go any further. But I don't have enough yet. And so to get the remainder, we'll use the aliquot parts. So remember, we found the aliquot parts of 12. They're half, a third, a fourth, a sixth, and a twelfth. So I need 31, so I need this 
2 of 12, this 24 piece here, and I need 7 more. And I can pick up 7 more by taking the half, and then one more, the 12th. And so the pieces that I need to make up my 31 are the 2 of 12, the half of 12, and the 12th of 12. So I need these three pieces and my quotient, 2 and a half and a 12th. Well, let's take a look at something like 62 divided by 18. So we'll find our multiples and aliquot parts of 18. So one of the 18s is 18. We can double it. 2 of the 18s is 36. If I double this again, I'm going to get 72, which is more than I need. So I'm not going to bother doubling it again. If we're fantastically lucky, we'll have everything we need. So I need to make 62. I have 36 and 18, which is not enough. It's only 54, so I'm going to need 8 more. So let's find the aliquot parts of 18. So one easy way to figure out what those aliquot parts are is they correspond to the things that will divide 18. So 18 is even, so I can take half of 18, which will be 9. 18 is also divisible by 3, so I can take 1 -third of 18, which will be 6. 18 is also divisible by 3, so I can take a 6 of 18, which gives me 3. 18 is also divisible by 9, so I could take a ninth of 18, which is going to be 2. And 18 is also divisible by itself, so I can also take an 18th of 18, which is just going to give me 1. So I need to make 62, so I'll take this package of 2, that gives me 36. I'll take this set of 18, that brings us up to 54. Uh, the 9 is too big, I can take the 3rd. That gets me up to 60, and I need the ninth for the last two. And so our quotient is going to be 3 and a third and a ninth. Now, almost all fractions in Egyptian mathematics were unit fractions. The only common exception was the fraction two-thirds, which had a special symbol. And a little bit later on, we'll see the significance of this special symbol. And we usually designate this in modern typography as three with two lines over it. Now, once I have a third, I can actually find two-thirds by doubling the amount. So two-thirds is going to be 10. 15 is also divisible by 5, so I can also take a fifth of 15. That's 3. And then finally, a fifteenth of 15 is 1. And since I want to make 28, I need the package of 1. That gets me 15. The two-thirds gets me 10 more for a total of 25, and the one-fifth brings us up to 28. And we don't need the other parts, so we'll blur them out. And so our quotient is going to rely on these three rows, and it's going to be one and two-thirds and a fifth. And so let's divide 28 by 15, and we'll construct our table of aliquot and two-thirds parts. So one of the 15s is 15. 2 is going to be 30, which is already too much, so I'm not going to bother doubling it, but I do want to find those aliquot parts. So I know 15 is divisible by 3, so a third is 5. 